Persona 5 was one of the best JRPGs in recent memory. It packed a compelling, character-driven story, a satisfying turn-based combat system, and a confident sense of style. Technically speaking, it was a very curious game, however. Essentially a PS3 title at its core, with assets and rendering tech built around Sony's 2006 system, but ultimately released in 2016 on PS3 and PS4. Excellent art and a simplified cell shaded style kept the visuals fresh, though its 7th gen heritage was extremely obvious. An expanded re-release dubbed Persona 5 Royal came out a few years later on PS4, loaded with new content, gameplay improvements, and visual tweaks. After a three year wait, that version of the game is finally out on non-PlayStation platforms, including current gen console releases and a much requested Switch port. So how does this PS3 derived game scale up to PS5 and Series X? And is the Switch release everything it should be? Persona 5 had a bit of an odd gestation. It was developed solely with PS3 hardware in mind, but after missing a few release dates, it ended up shipping on PS3 and PS4 in the fall of 2016, as one of the last major titles to hit Sony's seventh gen system. Models are stylized but low poly, environments are boxy and feature basic baked lighting, and texture resolution is poor. The PS4 version of the game benefited from a 1080p rendering resolution and UI, but left everything else unchanged, a very bare bones conversion of the PS3 code. With Persona 5 Royal, you get the sense that Atlas tried to make the game fit a bit better on last gen hardware. Some of the more egregious looking textures in the original game have been replaced with higher res assets. New artwork adorns many of the game's buildings and streets. Depth of field has been added in certain gameplay segments. 2D elements have been redrawn with smaller text and new overlays and lighting and color grading have been reworked, with the updated game having a brighter, punchier look on the whole. These are the sorts of differences that are only readily apparent in side-by-side -side comparisons, but the improvements are there. It's definitely still a PS3 title at heart, of course, which perhaps makes it ideally suited to the Nintendo Switch. On the surface, it looks like a perfect fit. Persona 5 is a very long game that is mostly broken up into shorter activities suitable for portable play, and is built around older 7th gen rendering tech. So how does it actually fare on Nintendo's hybrid console? There's good news here and bad news. The Switch translation of Persona 5 Royal is indeed a full and feature complete version of the game, without any fundamental cutbacks. That means the same structure, style, and gameplay of the other console releases. On the technical side, there are aspects worth praising as well. Loading times are still mercifully brief and effectively masked by short animations. And despite a pretty large reduction in file size, the animated cutscenes are largely free of visible artifacting. But I came away with mixed feelings on the ultimate result. There are a few major issues here. Firstly, texture resolution has taken a substantial hit across the board. Switch is using texture assets derived from the Royal version, but they are significantly degraded relative to their showing on PS4. At worst, the results can look a little bit mangled, like with this in-game text, and in some cases we get missing material properties. The hit to asset quality does come as a bit of a surprise, especially considering the original game's assets had to fit into just 512 megabytes of RAM on the PS3. This also has a knock-on effect on the game's baked shadows. In this outdoor scene, environmental shadows are less subtle and look quite a bit cruder. The advertisement in the train station has reasonably sharp close-range shadows on PS4, which look more diffuse on Switch as a result of the more limited asset resolution. Taken in isolation, texture detail looks mostly fine, but there are obvious downgrades relative to PS4. Plus, and this is the big one, rendering resolution has been cut back pretty massively. In docked mode, the game renders at 1440 by 810, slightly above 720p. Portable play is cut back further, down to just 960 by 540. Persona 5 is a game that depends enormously on raw pixel count to resolve fine details, like the thin lines that surround character models. It presents a very high contrast aesthetic without any sort of image treatment, lacking even a simple post AA, so aliasing and other visual deficiencies are on clear display. At 1080p, the image quality is somewhat marginal already, but at 810p, the image looks quite messy. It's not too bad, but I was expecting a stronger result here. 
fundamentally Persona 5 Royal is still a PS3 game at heart, and many titles that originally shipped on 7th gen hardware run at 1080p in TV play on the Switch. But it's the portable mode that really annoys. At 540p Persona 5 Royal is rendering about 56% of the full 720p panel resolution, and it shows. Expect a blurry and imprecise resolve with a clumsy handling of distant detail. This is far from the pixel precise 720p that I was hoping for. At least Atlas has opted for a bilinear scale here, unlike some other recent lower res switch releases, so aliasing artifacts aren't unnecessarily highlighted. And the UI does seem to render at the console output resolution in both modes, so they do tend to look cleaner than the 3D content. 960 by 540 is within the portable resolution range of some very demanding Switch games. Titles like The Witcher 3 or Doom 2016, which showcase much more advanced visuals than what we're seeing here. It's also below the resolutions featured in other Atlas titles on the Switch, including Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Shin Megami Tensei 5, and Catherine, all of which have comparable or superior visual complexity. Here, it seems that Persona 5 Royal on Switch is simply a less than ideal porting effort. It's also possible that the new areas and effects in Persona 5 Royal were designed with less regard for performance on PS4, which likely had a lot of rendering overhead when running the PS3-derived code of the original game. That less disciplined approach would work fine on a 1.8 teraflop system, but could struggle quite a bit on the low-power Switch hardware. The vastly reduced pixel count does have some positive side effects, however. Persona 5 Royal targeted 30fps on PS4, and the same 30fps target returns here. In roughly 8 hours of play, I couldn't find a single performance drop in 3D scenes. Everything plays back at a consistent 30fps, including battles and busy city areas. Persona 5 is largely turn-based, so the occasional dropped frame wouldn't be a huge deal, but this does appear to be a locked frame rate. There were, however, some odd animation issues present on Switch during the launch period, including reduced rate animations with this distortion effect in front of safe rooms. But as of late October, I was unable to replicate this behavior. It's possible that the recent 15.0.1 Switch system update fixed these issues, or possibly I'm just not able to replicate the triggers that may have caused them in the first place. In any case, this seems to have been a bug that has possibly been resolved as of this recording. Persona 5 Royal is one of the most widely requested Switch ports of all time, but the final results here are less than ideal. It's still a playable and performant game, but image quality is a bit substandard. Let's move up the performance ladder and on to the last gen and current gen releases on home consoles. In terms of basic visual features, it's just about what you would expect. Essentially, we're getting the PS4 version rendered at different pixel counts. There are no readily apparent differences in texture quality, shadows, draw distance, or anti-aliasing. But higher resolutions hugely improve Persona 5's image quality, and there is a big spread here. PS4 delivers a 1080p image as previously mentioned as does the Xbox Series S. PS4 Pro, One X, PS5, and Series X all turn in a full 2160p resolve without any oddities to suggest a non-native presentation. Those are all fairly straightforward, but there are two exceptions. Firstly, PS4 Pro and Xbox One X get a 4K 3D resolution, but miss out on a 4K UI, getting the same 1080p 2D art as the PS4 and the Xbox One S counts in at just 900p for 3D content, and appears to have a 900p UI as well, which feels strange and out of place given the age and visual complexity of this game. A 1080p showing seems like it would be well within the remit of the Xbox One, despite its limitations and more demanding software. Stacking the consoles up side by side, there's a pretty huge difference in basic image resolve. Persona 5 has no anti-aliasing of any kind, so increased rendering resolutions massively improve the consistency of the presentation. Detail that looks barely coherent on the One S is clear and sharp on the One X, for instance. But even at 4K, there's still plenty of jagged edges and image breakup on fine details, like character outlines and highlights. Performance does at least clock in at pretty decent levels. To break it down, Persona 5 Royal targets 30 FPS on last gen machines and 60 FPS on current gen, and that target is effectively met, 
As across all my hours of testing, I didn't see a single frame rate drop in 3D content on any home console platform. Regardless of system, you should expect a very consistent experience here. Persona 5 Royal has a lot of fast animation without motion blur of any kind. So cutscenes and complex attacks can be a little bit hard to follow in real time on last gen consoles. Everything has a staccato, slightly choppy appearance that arguably fits well within the game's anime stylings, but doesn't always feel great to look at. The boost to 60 FPS on current gen machines basically resolves these issues, with much cleaner animation in motion. At 4K60 on PS5 and Series X, the game looks particularly pleasing. A sharp, crisp, and smooth rendition of Persona 5 that manages to hold up remarkably well. I did worry initially that some of the lower frame rate elements of Persona 5's visual design, like the animated character portraits and hand drawn 2D effects, wouldn't translate well when juxtaposed against 60 FPS 3D content. It's definitely true that the low frame rate elements fit a little bit better at 30 FPS, but I didn't really mind the way they looked when presented at 60. Plus, most of the 2D animations are keyframed and scale perfectly well to higher frame rate targets. There is one last platform to take a look at, the Steam Deck. Valve's Linux-based portable system seems like it might be able to get us the best of both worlds, a portable experience that rivals current-gen consoles. And initially, that seems like exactly what we're getting. Running the Steam Deck at 1080p resolution, I was able to get the game to run at max settings at 60fps in the opening sections without issue, with more or less identical visuals and performance to the Series S. The Steam Deck even reported fairly light levels of utilization with low GPU clocks and minimal CPU usage. As soon as I got into the city areas of the game, however, I experienced some harsh FPS drops for seemingly no reason without a corresponding spike in utilization or clock speeds. Lowering resolution had no effect in my testing. The drops remained regardless of what I tried. And early dungeon sections also exhibited serious FPS issues. Capping the frame rate to 30 FPS using the in-game frame rate limiter seemed to work fine, however, and ended up being preferable to the Steam OS limiter as it incurred a much smaller increased input latency. This would be my preferred way to play on Steam Deck, but I don't think the deck is particularly well suited to this kind of game. And that's because Persona 5 has a sharp, bold color scheme that makes extensive use of pure black. Plenty of UI elements and darker 3D content are intended to be completely black. Unfortunately, the Steam Deck's IPS LCD display is fairly mediocre by modern standards and lacks the contrast ratio to really do Persona 5's art justice. Dull gray tones tend to dominate the image, particularly in areas at night. The Switch OLED ends up producing a much more visually dynamic image, in my opinion, for portable play, with a bold, punchy look with beautiful pure blacks. It does offer much lower res 3D rendering, but it packs display technology that is a better fit for this particular title. It's not an easy choice, but if I had to choose, I think I would lean towards the OLED Switch for this game. Persona 5 Royal is a highly engrossing and unique title that packs serialized TV-style storylines into a 100-plus hour single-player adventure. Relative to the original game, this is more of a remix than a substantially expanded title. I've beaten both games, and my sense is that there's probably about 15 or so hours of additional content here, in addition to various gameplay tweaks and enhancements. But this is definitely the best version of Persona 5, and now it's available to play across essentially all modern systems. The game scales fairly predictably across the more capable home console platforms, but these ports don't seem to translate Persona 5's PS3 era tech very efficiently, so more power-constrained consoles like the Nintendo Switch come in with serious visual compromises relative to the PS4 release. There are no bad ports here, but there are a couple that fall below expectations for modern conversions of 7th gen software. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfinder.net for exclusive and early access content and to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.